Hello again. Uh, today, right now, we are going to read the text, which is on your textbook, page 89, with a little help from my friends. And uh, before we go to the text, just look at the um, the opening image, the opening image, uh, and the mood it convey. It's like amusement. This is number one. Uh, use the children. Why? The, uh, the author to this um, uh, opening image. Uh, number one, if you remember, we said that the author of the image, which is uh, Frozen uh, Domus, uh, she had written this r memoir about a, a special period in her life when she was seven years old, when she traveled to USA or to America with her family, and she spent with her family, and she spent there two years. Uh, so she is writing this text, this uh, memoir. Um, from the um, um, uh, a child lens, uh, she is writing or uh, remembering things and writing the, them down through a child's lens. Um, uh, this is uh, that's why the uh, she he used the children as a symbol in this opening image. Number two, they are um, laughing. This is the innocence of the children, and also during this text, you will find the author using a very simple uh, language, easy to be interpreted, also to be un easy to be understood, and it's full of amusement. As the author uh, is mentioning all the funny times or the funny situation she had met when she was talking to the American about Iran and uh, people who do not know anything about this country. Let's go to the background. It will be clear right now. Okay. Uh, once known as Persia, Iran is an oil-rich country in the Middle East. In 1953, the United States had helped to remove Iran's government and to place a shah, or king, in power. In 1972, when this excerpt begins, the Iranian government was still a monarchy led by the Shah. However, seven years later, during the Iranian Revolution of 1979, the country would undergo the political upheaval the author refers to in her first sentence. The Shah would be overthrown and replaced with the government that was unfriendly to the United States. Many Americans returned it the hostility. The word hostility, the opposite is hospitality. Hospitality is showing kindness and um, generous. Hostility showing unfriendliness. Showing enemy, being enemy. Okay. Um, let's read the first paragraph. I was lucky to have come to America years before the political upheaval in Iran. The American Americans were encountered. Uh, we encountered were kind and curious, unafraid to ask questions and willing to listen. As soon as I spoke enough English to communicate, I found myself being interviewed nonstop by children and adults alike. My life became one long running opera show, minus the free luxury accommodation in Chicago and opera. Um, first, let's talk about this one, the, the first line, this one. Why did she start her text by saying this sentence? I was lucky to have come to America years before. Uh, uh, here she is explaining where she had come from. This is number one. Number two, um, uh, it reveals that um, uh, it reveals it's a memoir. It means that she is going to cover this time where she's the, the years she spent in America. Uh, also, uh, it will tell about the, the um, um, Uh, it will tell about the, this period that I told you the, in this t time. Uh, why did she say that? Because um, why did she say that we that she was lucky? Uh, because the Iranians were not always welcomed by Americans after the upheaval, 
after the upheaval. Let's go to the word upheaval. What does it mean? First encounter. Let's first encounter. The word encounter, this one, yes. It's a verb and it means um, uh, confront. What's the meaning of confront? It means meet or face or experience to. You'll find the sh a sheet in the OLMS where you find all the words with its meaning and um, uh, synonym and anthem. Uh, uh, the, uh, the opposite of, um, of encounter is to avoid. Avoid something means that you don't want to confront. Like when you say encounter your problem, it means face your problem and solve it. Uh, or if you avoid, you want to avoid them, they will not, no one will, uh, no one will solve it for you. Let's go to the word upheaval. There, there was like um, the political upheaval. The word upheaval means revolution. It means revolution or it means um, a, a major change or outbreak. The opposite is peace or calm. Peace or calm. So we encountered kind of curious the curious people are people who are asking a lot of questions because they want to know something. So we can say in curious mean inquisitive. Inquisitive. And the opposite is incurious. Paragraph two, on the topic of Iran, American minds were the tableau racy. It means they were the um, were like blank, empty, blank. Judging from the question they asked, she know from the uh, she knew that from the question they asked. It was clear that most Americans in 1972 had never heard of Iran. We did our best to educate. Uh, they, they did our best to, to let them learn about Iran. How, what did they say? You know Asia? Well, you go south at the Soviet Union and there we are. Or we try, to the next page, or we try to be more, we try to be more, yes, uh, biologic, it means like in, in um, related to the, something related to the, um, to the countryside. Uh, mentioning being proud uh, of the beautiful Caspian Sea, where the famous caviar comes from. Most people in Waiter, the city where they sit in, did not know about the famous caviar, and once we explained what it was, they would crunch up their faces, fig, fish eggs, they would say, grass. We tried mentioning our proximity to Afghanistan or Iraq, but it was no use. Uh, having exhausted our geographical clues, we would say at the end, when they don't, can say anything else, we have heard, you have heard of, of India, Japan, or China? We are on the same continent. Okay. Uh, the word, the word the crunch, to crunch something, it means to, uh, to crinkle it or wrinkle it. Crinkle or wrinkle. Okay. The opposite is expand, to expand it. Okay. So they were, we, they tried to mention their nearness to Afghanistan or Iraq, but it was no use. Okay, let's go to paragraph three. We had always known that uh, ours um, is a small country and that America is very big. But even as a seven year old, I was surprised that so many Americans had never noticed us on the map. Perhaps it's like driving a yogo and realizing that the 18 wheeler can't see you. Um, 
okay move to the um, paragraph uh, for paragraph four in Iran geography is a requirement in every grade since the government issues textbooks every student to study the same material okay let's jump this place and go to the um, uh, in paragraph five Let's go to paragraph 5. You can read it. It's very, the, the, the language is so easy and simple. Paragraph 5. None of the kids uh, in whether a city an hour outside Los Angeles ever asked me about geography. They wanted to know about more important things, such as camels. Skip this. And um, let's go to um, I always, starting from here. I always disappointed them by admitting that I had never seen a camel in my entire life. And as far as I write goes, our chivalry was rather smooth. They reacted as if I had told them that there really was a person in the meek mouse consume. You feel here that she is having a sense of humor here. Paragraph 6. We were also asked about electricity, tents, and the Sahara. Skip this, okay, and go to the um, the line where it started here. Intended to remedy the image of our homeland as uh, backward, my father took it upon himself to enlighten Americans whenever possible. Any unsuspecting American who asked my father a question received as a bonus a lecture on the successful history of the petroleum industry in Iran. As my father uh, droned on, I watched the faces of these kinds of Americans who were undoubtedly making mental notes no, never to talk to a foreigner again. Okay, let's go to the word remedy. So, intended to remedy, it means um, intended, it had the intention to remedy the image of our homeland. They want to correct the image of their homeland, which is Iran. So remedy means, it's a verb. Remedy is a verb and it means to cure or it means to heal or um, uh, uh, relief, okay? The opposite is to damage. Also the image is the hurt or harm, hurt or harm, okay? Uh, also, we have the word enlighten. Uh, he took it upon himself to enlighten Americans. To enlighten it means to, uh, like when you don't understand something going on, so you want someone to enlighten you, it means to explain for you or to inform you or to teach you, explain uh, or advise or inform. The opposite, uh, deceive or hide. Deceive, or hide. Okay, let's go to paragraph seven. Paragraph seven, okay. My family and I wondered why Americans had such a mistaken image of Iran. We were offered a clue one day by a neighbor who told us that uh, he knew about Iran because he had seen Lawrence of Arabia. It's a movie, by the way. Lawrence of Arabia is a movie. Whoever Lawrence was, we had never heard of him. We said, we said my father then explained that Iranians are an Indo European. It means that they are part of Europe. Are Indo-European people. We are not Arabs. We do, however, have two things in common with Saudi Arabia. He continued, Islam and petroleum. Now I won't bore you. The next page here. Now I won't bore you with religion. He said, but let me tell you about the petroleum industry. Let's go back again here. Now. Um, let me ask a question first. Why did the father tell um, his neighbor about the petroleum especially? Uh, you know that uh, the, the petroleum is a mean of um, 
uh, it's an industry, and any country who has this kind of industry, it will be a rich and successful one. Why the father intended to do this, I will tell him about the petroleum especially. Is he, with some concern, is to show the similarity or the differences by mentioning the petroleum? You know that America is an industry country, so of course, this means that he wants to show the similarity more than the differences. He wants to tell the American people, we are just like you, we are so rich and then we are uh, one of the successful industrial uh, country here. So, um, so he chose to inform him that uh, uh, Iran was an, a modern country with a successful petroleum industry because his concern is to show him the, sim the similarities, not the differences. Um, let's go to the next page here. When he said, yes, sir, I won't uh, bore you, uh, we haven't met, maybe we haven't met this, uh, this verb before. It's from the verb bored. Do you remember bored, to feel bored? Yes, it means, yes, uh, I won't bore you, bore you. It means that I don't want to uh, annoy you. I don't want to um, uh, exhaust you, to bother you, to tire you, to bother. So this is the meaning. The the anthem, the anthem would be like interest you. To interest. Interest or delight. Um, okay. If we stop at this part for a while, uh, let's talk about something that the um, uh, the author when he um, in writing, in writing the uh, uh, the memoir, uh, there's like something intersect with the uh, uh, with between the the experience of the writer and the, some other aspects of the life they are living. Those aspe aspects can appear in different uh, fields, like um, the values and beliefs. Speaking about the values and beliefs of the between the, uh, his own own beliefs and value and the other's one. Uh, politics, language, foods, uh, costume. It appeared here in this part when the father said to the, uh, his neighbor, I won't bore you with religion because he knew that the American people hate to speak about the religion. They didn't like to speak about it. So he, he didn't want to, um, uh, to um, annoy that him by, by speaking about the religion, but he wanted to tell him about the petroleum industry because the American people are measuring the others the others by being rich or like them or not. So here, um, uh, she uh, uh, shows here the value in this part or in this line. I want, I want for you. Here she shows um, uh, show the value and beliefs. Shows value and beliefs aspects. Uh, in paragraph eight, you can read it by yourself. Um, here, the uh, the author is mentioning uh, some funny situation that she had met with the American people. Um, let's jump to um, let's jump to paragraph nine. I tried my best to be worthy representative of my homeland. Uh, she tried her best to uh, to represent her her homeland very well. Let's skip this part and go to uh, I sometimes, from here, I sometimes got tired of the questions. I, however, never punched anybody with my fast, I used words. She was so quiet and she controlled herself very well. One boy at school had a habit of asking me particularly stupid questions. One day he inquired about camels again, this time perhaps uh, uh, foreshadowing a vocation in the storytelling. I told him that yes, we had camels, a one hump and a two hump. The one hump belonged to my parents and the two hump was our family station wagon. His eyes widened. Where do you keep them? He asked. In the garage, of course. 
I told him. Yes, this is another funny situation. Here she started, here she started to be uh, this part. She starts to be amused. Uh, at the beginning, she was taken seriously by answering all the questions honestly. Now, as long as she has started to adapt, she started to be, to amu be amused. She started to, yes, to make fun of their, their questions. Um, paragraph um, 12 and 13, uh, a more funny situation. So we are going to skip them and go to, skip them and go to paragraph 14. All the boys often ask me to teach them some bad words in your, some bad words in your language. At first, I politely refused. This is when she was taking it seriously. My refusal merely increased their determination. They insisted on and asked her to teach, teach them bad words in their language. So I solved the problem by teaching them phrases like man haram, which means uh, I'm an idiot. What happened? Yes, we, you can keep reading it. Yes, the boys keep running in the, uh, uh, yes, in the, the, the playground, keeping saying, I'm an idiot, I'm an idiot, uh, uh, in, uh, in Iranian, uh, and she never told him the truth. Then, uh, no, that was very funny. Um, paragraph 15, but almost every person who asked us a question asked it with kindness, uh, although the questions were silly, but they were very kind. Questions were often followed by a suggestion of places to visit in California. So uh, they ask a question and then they suggest for her a place to visit in, in, the, in California. At school, the timid children who inquired about camels also share their food with me. I bet you have never tried an, an or you have one? Or my mom just baked these peanut butter cookies and she sent you one. Kids invited me to their houses to show me what their rooms looked like. On Halloween, one family brought over a costume, knowing that I would surely be the only one, surely be the only kid in the Halloween parade without one. Yes, we can stop at the, this one, the without one, in the other uh, other page, uh, and let us here speak about this sport where they they start to offer here an Oreo, one of the famous food. Uh, among kids there in America, the peanut butter, the same thing, uh, famous thing in America. Here, she is, what kind of aspect she introduces here? She shows food aspect. Shows food aspect of the, the new community just trying to adapt with. Also, in here, this place on Halloween, this part till we reach uh, the, the, the next page. Uh, here, this is at the Halloween, as you know, it's one of the American tradition. So here she, another aspect of the new community, she so, show a tradition. Traditional aspects of the new community. She saw tradition aspect of the new community. Uh, white American were uh, confused about the Iranian culture. Uh, they realized that Doma wouldn't know about the American tradition, which is the Halloween. So that's why they brought for her this costume. Let's go to the next page. Paragraph 16. Paragraph 16. Uh, after almost two years in winter, my father's assignment was completed and we had to return home. The last month of our stay, the last month of our stay, I attended one slumber party after another, all thrown on my honor. Yes, the word is slumber party. A slumber means sleep. So the sleep party means to spend the night there. Slumber means sleep or it means rest. The opposite, uh, of course, it will be uh, like um, uh, consciousness. Consciousness, to be aware. 
Um, <clears throat> yes, keep, let's keep reading. Um, yes, so they made a lot of slumber or night party after another, and all this was uh, on her, uh, in her honor. Okay, um, this avalanche of kindness did not make our impending departure any easier. Avalanche or avalanche of kindness. The word avalanche, it's like um, um, a sudden rush of a large quantity. A sudden large uh, crash, rush of a large quantity of what? Of, uh, of kindness. So avalanche. Large quantity. Quantity, yes, quantity, quantity. So a large, a large, a sudden rush of a large quantity of kindness. Here she is over exaggerating to show you the how great was this kindness that make it difficult for them to uh, to leave the country. Uh, the word uh, didn't make it our impending departure. As long as their departure was so close, it means that in the impending means um, approaching or coming. Approaching, something approaching, it means coming closer or coming. And of course, the, um, the opposite will be distant. Distant, it's an adjective. Destined, not destined, destined is the noun. Destined is, the, is an adjective. Um, yes, keep reading. Everyone wanted to know when we would come back to America. Let's just stop here. We will jump to uh, my friends considered visiting their grandmothers in uh, Oregon to be longer trip. So visiting me in Iran was like taking a left turn at the next moon. It wasn't going to happen. I didn't know then what I would indeed be returning to America about two years later. So again, she's tried to be amused, being funny. Um, let's go to paragraph 17. Um, yes, paragraph 17, let's just start from my mother. My mother spent the last few weeks giving gifts to our American friends. I had wondered why my mother had brought so many Parisian handcrafts with her. Now I knew. Everyone from my teachers to the crossing guard to the uh, brownie leader, leader to the neighbors received something. This is from my country, especially for you. We should explain. We, she, sh she would explain. These handcrafts, which probably turned up in the garage sales the following year, were received with tears and promises to write. 18. My mother was particularly sad to return to Iran. I had always an assumed that she would be relieved to return to her family and to a land where she spoke the language and didn't need me to act as a, her interpreter. We said interpreter means translator. But I realized later that even though my mother could not understand anything, the crossing guard, Mr. Popkin, said, she understood that this woman looked out for me, and she understood her smiles. Okay, let's jump. We are still um, in paragraph 18. Let's jump to um, even though, yes, here, sorry. Even though I had been the beneficial, beneficiary of all the attention, my mother watching silently from a distance had also felt the warmth of generosity and kindness. It was hard to leave. So her mother had the same, the same feeling, and that was like a surprise for her, for the author herself. Um, so the, the, the mother, um, 
the mother thoughts about America. What what would her her thought about America? Um, she liked them. Um, it seemed that she didn't want to leave America as well. Okay. Bag of nineteen. Yes. Um, let's uh, skip and the start from this part. We this part we remember. We remember the kindness more than ever knowing that our relatives who immigrated to the country after the Iranian Revolution did not encounter the same America. Um, let's just stop here and discuss this point first. Uh, first, the, uh, he, uh, there's a differentiate or a different reception to her immigrated relative, new immigrated relative, due to the Iranian Revolution. Uh, um, this line, uh, starting from we remember to the word America, here she uh, is showing the political aspects. Here she shows political aspects. She speak about the political relation between the two, uh, the two country. Um, as I told you, that the um, uh, there is um, a differentiation happened after the um, the Iranian Revolution. Oops. Okay. Let's go to the last page, the last few lines. Yes. Uh, Americans who had bumper stickers on their car that read Iranians go home or we play cowboys and Iranians. The Americans, yeah, the American they met rarely invented, uh, invited them to their houses. These Americans felt that they knew all about Iran and its people and they had no question, just opinions. My relative did not think Americans were very kind. The, the, uh, the, the aspects uh, or the, 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 uh, the perspective of each one of them had been uh, changed. The, uh, they are not welcomed anymore in America, I mean the Iranian. So generally, if I ask about the tone that is used uh, in this text, what kind of view, tone did she use? Uh, it, was it angry? That's right, the, the used tone of the author. Was it angry? Was she uh, um, tense? Uh, tensed? Was it amused? Mysterious? I believe that she was amused. All the funny uh, events she had mentioned, all of them are showing uh, amusement. Uh, okay, I hope that you are going to read it again one more time, so it, in, in order to be able to understand it and to uh, answer the uh, comprehension question, that will be your homework for today. Uh, thank you very much, and kindly enjoy your day, um, and um, stay alert for the coming session. Bye-bye.